Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one, I'm going to be reviewing the latest set by Mammoth Factory, Flesh to Stone. So full disclosure, Mammoth Factory did sponsor this video, so I do want to get that out there. But obviously this opinion will all be my own and these will be my thoughts and feelings. They haven't threatened me that if I say anything negative about this set, they'll immortalize me in miniature format in some kind of hideous form. Honestly, they've not. Please don't do it. So first up, what is Flesh to Stone? So it is chapter two in their ongoing series of D&D adventures. And basically, if you sign up to their Patreon, each month you get a set of miniatures, you get the adventure to go with it, you get all the maps to go with it, you basically get all the virtual stuff that you're gonna need it as well. So if you want tokens and character tokens and stat blocks, all of that comes with it, which is really, really cool. Even if you don't have a 3D printer, you get all the stuff you need to be able to play one of the adventures. You can either do it as a standalone adventure or part of an ongoing campaign. Now, Flesh to Stone has all of these really cool miniatures that you basically get printed off a whole host of them to test them out and see how they work and see how they print off and I painted up a few of them as well just to see what they were like. Now apologies, my flesh is turning to water whilst we're out here because it's so hot in the UK at the moment and who would have ever thought it would be. So I'm slowly turning into a swimming pool, which is uh, not nice for you guys. Now the general premise of Flesh to Stone is that you are a set of adventurers going off to basically find this descendant and you come across this village that's been like the whereabouts and everything else and they're slowly turning to stone. So some of them have turned to stone, some of them are in the process of turning to stone, and you embark on an adventure to find out why the hell are these people turning to stone? It's a really interesting premise, and there's some fantastic looking maps in this as well. So depending on which way you go, you've got like this vertical cliff face where you get attacked by these, I'm gonna call them crow creatures, but they're big beasty things, and that sounds a whole lot of fun. There's also orcs, obviously. It's like part of the big main picture. You've got these really cool trolls as well. So it's a whole lot of interesting stuff going on, a really interesting story as well. So again, if you are really driven in terms of story and being able to do things that aren't just combat based when it comes to D&D, this adventure promises a lot of that. If you're into combat as well, well, it also offers a lot of that, but you can avoid it and there's a lot of kind of stealthy areas. It's really, really fun. So first up, what do you get with this pack? Well, you get this mountain titan, which looks pretty cool. You get these liv livervores, these like crow vulture creatures. You get the set of mountain ogres, which look awesome. I'm a sucker for like trolls and ogres, so I definitely wanted to print those out. You get a bunch of little humans as well, which basically you can act as your adventurers. You also get some orcs that go with it, and like an orc boss. There's this stone cavern haunter thing, which is like this golemy thing with loads of arms coming out of it, which looks really cool. You get some terrain as well, so there's different crystals, there's different totems that you can print out. You get a ram, and you also get a dead ram. I mean, that's just absolutely savage, so. Oof. You can also get busts as well. So again, if you are really taken by any of the heroes or villains in this, there are a set of four busts that you'll be able to print off. Now let's talk about the actual process. So getting these all into your slicer is easy enough. Just bear in mind, they are relatively large files and I'm not gonna hold that against them because they're really, really detailed files as well. But depending on the age of your machine, it might struggle a bit and take a bit longer to kind of do all the slicing and saving, but I got them all done and I didn't have any real issues there. They all come pre-supported or unsupported as well if you're into doing your own support, and they're actually pretty easy to get off. I went with the hot water method, so I've been trying out a hot air blower, a heat gun, heat gun is the actual thing you call it. I've been trying that out recently, and on some models that works really well. On these, not so much because the supports are quite fiddly, and these are smaller little models. They've got a lot more fiddly bits on there. They've got some small bits like, this lady here, she's got these knives. If you're not careful, they're gonna snap right off. So I used the hot water method, basically dunked them in it, and went in with a scalpel as well, just to kind of cut around bits that I needed to, that are a little bit more fiddly. I didn't have any breakages, which I was really happy about, and I, I thought I would have done. If you are printing this set off, you absolutely wanna use some kind of flexible resin. I use LGO ABS Lite resin. I find it really, really good for these sort of models. I don't get too many breakages, but if you're using a standard resin, honestly, I think a lot of these, especially these like little fiddly weapons, are gonna break, so just bear that in mind. You wanna get the right resin for using these, otherwise you're gonna have so much heartbreak, especially if you've knocked one over. Once they were printed, I cured them and then primed them. And again, I did my standard Xenophil Prime, and that's where all those details really start to come out. With this sort of size model, I'm always, every single time, even though I know that they're not bad, I'm always disappointed before I prime them because they're smaller 
and they're harder to see when they're just that sort of like plasticky resin. But once you get a primer on there, the details start to pop and they look fantastic. And there's a lot of detail. Like I mentioned at the start, they are a larger file format because there's so much detail on them, but they look really, really good. I'm really happy with the way these all turned out. They also come with their own bases as well. I used a couple of them. So the Orcs, I printed off the bases for them. The live, the liver for the Vulture. I'm going to call them a Vulture from that, this point on. Also came with one that I printed out. But for the rest of them, I just kind of put them onto standard bases to save some resin there and kind of mix it up a bit. Now, I was really taken by these ogres. I like the look of them. So I hit them with my airbrush and did this sort of like blue transition and everything. I threw over a purple oil wash as well to try and get into those cracks. And because they're meant to be turning into stone, these orcs, they're meant to be just like have these stony bits. I went back in with like a pale dry brush and kind of hit some of the top bits just to give it a slightly stony effect and then obviously put them onto a stony base. And yeah, I like the way they turned out. The paint job's not the best by a long shot, but actually to get them onto a table to be able to play the adventure, I think they look pretty good. And same with the orcs as well, I went really simple. I just did like a malignant green, some crusader brown from speed paints, and then literally again, threw a wash over them and then a pale dry brush and called it there. Even though these orcs are really, really small, they're actually not too hard to paint. They, they look really detailed and at a glance they look fantastic, but actually getting in there, the stuff stands out well enough, if that makes sense. So there's enough definition between like, the orc's got these straps across his front, and sorry about hitting that microphone. <laughs> so the orc has these like straps that go across the front and I thought they'd be really hard to hit, but actually they were surprisingly easy to paint up. So even though they are smaller and there's a lot of detail in there, it, it only took me like a couple of minutes each to get each layer of color down on these. So yeah, they're really easy to paint up. So models wise, they are fantastic. Like I said, you do need to be careful when you print them and then try to get them off the support. If you're not using a flexible resin, you probably are gonna break off a lot of small little weapons and stuff like that. And again, if you're not using a flexible weapon, if you knock them about, then you're probably gonna get some breakages. So try to use a flexible resin if you can. Apart from that though, they actually came off really well. The supports are surprisingly good on these as well. They all come off very nicely. And I had a blast getting them all printed off and starting to paint some of these up as well. And I'm really excited to play the adventure. So once again, another really good set from Mama Factory. If you haven't checked them out already, head on over to their Patreon where you can sign up, you get the monthly adventure, and you get all the bits and bobs to go with it. It's definitely worthwhile checking out. If you're already signed up as well, hopefully this will help you when it comes to the actual printing things and some of the pitfalls just to avoid them. There. And if you are inspired by this kind of bluey kind of ogre thing, then yeah, hopefully that gives you a paint scheme to go for. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've melted. I have probably lost a couple of stone whilst filming this. It is so hot. Hit that like and subscribe button and come along for some more 3D printing and painting content. And if you haven't already, head on over to my Discord where we chat all things hobby. If you haven't already, head on over to my Patreon where you can support me in buying water. I'm going to need so much water after this video. In the meantime, stay safe. Well, I will see you soon. Bye.